forward to this. Okay. So again, I'm Ryan Schaff. I'm your professor, and uh, this is our second voluntary session. Uh, during this session, I'm going to just kind of close out uh, module number two and uh, module two and three, and just give you all a preview of module four. Module four is the one that's going to be opening up next week, so it's not even opened yet. But I wanted, to, you know, since you all are here, I wanted to give you kind of a preview, so this way we have some clarity moving forward exactly what to do. Uh, the next uh, session, I believe, for our voluntary sessions is in the early part of December. I think it's December eighth. Uh, don't quote me here. Actually, I do have the information here. Hold on one second. It is. Over. It is uh, December eighth, so just be be cognizant of that. Uh, it's going to be towards the end of the course, so it's going to go over quite a bit on um, the final exam. Okay. So. All right. So the digital citizenship presentation. This is the presentation you are. Currently work on you, uh, you know, for the most part, you all did your rough drafts on the uh, uh, for the presentation and have now put it up inside of a discussion forum inside of module three for a peer review. So uh, there are some of the subjects It could be on any of the laws that we explored in our graphic organizer, uh, which I did give back to everybody I did grade and submit it back inside of Brightspace. Uh, you pick a law, um, a few occasions people will do a topic or something associated with digital citizenship, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, but here is the content of the presentation. Oop, jumped ahead there. Uh, it has to have an introduction, introduce yourself to the audience, provide the purpose of the presentation. Who is this topic so, why is this um, topic so important to you and to education? It really should also in... Um, you tailor and craft these presentations to a specific stakeholder. You might do it for parents. You might do it for other teachers, may do it even for students. Either one is absolutely fine. Just uh, you know, make sure that that comes through who you're presenting it to. Uh, the second part is the historical context of the law. Like, why did it come about? What was the problem that it was trying to solve? A lot of times when you have laws and policies um, and so forth like this, it's meant to you know, solve some sort of issue. It's meant to resolve something. For instance, let me give you an example. Grace's law, which is now called Grace's two, uh, law 2.0, was meant to criminalize cyberbullying. Uh, there was um, cyberbullying actually um, was uh, had a fairly lenient uh, laws on the books bullying, and uh, a young lady named Grace ended up uh, killing herself because of the cyberbullying she was experiencing. Her parents and a lot of people ended up fighting and lobbying in Maryland to have it as, um, uh, you know, to, to have some cyberbullying legislation, which helped to criminalize uh, the issues of, you know, cyberbullying. So that's that's kind of the historical context. You come up with, like, why did this law happen? Um, a law definition. And again, when you come up with a definition, you just find a place that cites it. You don't have to give me all that legalese. Like, uh, you know, that, that's really written in kind of lawyer speak or lawyer talk. You could put it into your own words, kind of like what you did for the graphic organizer. But you'll see that in certain aspects and certain parts of this, I'm asking you to cite the sources of your definitions. Uh, like with any academic work, you're trying to cite the content. So this way you want to say what is the source that you ended up getting it from. We use APA 7th edition. Uh, if you're still kind of getting new and familiar with APA 7th edition, I give you a lot of feedback to help you. I'm not very punitive when it comes to, as long as you try your best, I am very understanding with that. Uh, but that is something that you're going to have to get to become familiar with uh, when it comes to doing your academic work. Uh, the rationale for the law, again, why was the law here? Why is the law here? It asks you to find some sources to help you kind of come up with that, like working like, why do we have this law? What is it doing? What's its function? How does it protect our students or our community? And then I ask you to make connections to the ISTE standard three. ISTE standard three focuses on uh, digital citizenship. How does the law policy or topic impact ISTE for educators standard three? Like, how is this helping digital citizenship? 
And again, that's really kind of connecting what does like FERPA, what does that mean for digital citizenship? What, is it, what does it mean? You have to just, you kind of put on your thinking cap and kind of just summarize what it means. And then of course, F and G are about best practices when it comes to the presentation. That's why we had module two. Module two kind of went through PowerPoint presentation like best practices or Google Slides best practices. Uh, this way, you know, a lot of you are going to be ending up like presenting content to not just students, but also, you know, to teachers and to parents during back to school night. You really should um, become familiar with the, uh, you know, how to do slide design and stuff. And finally, a reference slide that is like you're taking all of your different sources where you got information and you're citing that content in the last slide. So that those are really the expectations for your presentation. Um, now. I know that uh, that's a lot. That's why I've prepared this peer review process. Now, the peer review right now, a lot of people a little nervous because some people might be running a little bit late when it comes to submitting that. Don't be nervous. I specifically uh, stated that I'm not going to penalize you if you put something up on time and somebody's a little late. I understand you all are teachers that are currently working as hard as you can. I understand this, you know, the issue I am, I try to be a rigorous uh, professor, but at the same point in time, I'm very understanding about what you're going through and how, you know, how tough it is to start, uh, you know, a, a degree as you teach full time or as you, you know, as you have a full time job. Uh, I will keep on, I'm going to say nagging, but I will keep on announcing everybody exactly who, you know, what, you know, here's the percent of people have done it, please make sure you do it, please upload it, we're you know, other people are needing for you, you know, to review your work. So please get it up in a timely manner. Um, <clears throat> we may have like one or two people that are just, they're just floundering. They may just not be able to show up at that point in which uh, I'll kind of make an, I'll do an audible. I'll just change up a partner or something like that. Just, uh, just again, at, throughout this process, just keep checking your, Notre Dame email every, uh, you know, at least once or twice a day. So this way you can see if I'm going to switch things around. I will say for this class, this is um, 556. Uh, you guys had an 81% um, so far that have uploaded, which is, it's good. Uh, there are like two or three others that need to uh, get it up there. So far, the numbers that have been up there are the people, um, you know, I haven't had anybody drop yet. So and I'm hoping not to have anybody drop. So just be aware of that. Um, I will, I will make adjustments if we have to, but for now, let's just move forward with uh, the work that we're doing. And uh, the peer review is ongoing. If I have to even extend that from the 11th to the 12th, I will. Um, I'll do that just to try and make life uh, easier. Just to kind of review the process, just in case you're like, okay, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to this. For the peer review, you're taking your rough draft um, slide deck, your PowerPoint, your Google Slide. If you use Google Slides, please make sure you're sharing a public link, a link that anybody can have access to. You'll have to mess with the share um, and the permissions when it comes to sharing that resource. So please make sure you share a link that uh, anybody can really view. Uh, you're going to upload it to inside of module three, there is a peer review forum in which you can upload a document and then people can then reply back to you. So this way they can look at your, uh, they can look at your presentation and give you feedback. The feedback I'm asking people to do is called the PQP. So I'm just going to slip over here to, uh, into bright space right now to show you what I'm talking about. Let me go to content in the module three. <clears throat> and here's the peer review. All right, as I scroll down, you can see uh, I have people that have uploaded their assignments. Okay, you're like, okay, what do I do now? What you do is you find your partner, you come into their presentation, you download their document, and what you'll do is you'll just hit reply to thread, and you'll just type in what were the good thing, what would, what's the praise that you have about their presentation. So you would go through and say, well, these are the things that I praise about the presentation. It's got a great design. It was a very thorough definition of what the law is. Um, it was great for you to introduce yourself. You're basically looking at the criteria that I've kind of put into that list. 
And when you're done, you just hit the save button and you've completed your task. Now, the nice thing is, is that when you're done, you're going to get some feedback that you can then um, you can then uh, revise your own presentation and then submit it for final assessment. The presentation I am asking people to do uh, place it to two places. Number one, to put it inside of Brightspace. To submit to Brightspace, you'll find it right here. It just says presentation. You can upload your document here. Mine doesn't look quite the same as yours. You would find a place for you to upload your document here and submit it to me. But I also want you to put this uh, digital citizenship presentation into Chalk and Wire. So let me show you it in Chalk and Wire. So here's, here's Chalk and Wire. It's going to go into... Okay, so I'm just logging in like I did for the first assignment for the online discussion. And I'm going to scroll on down to as soon as this loads. It's a little slow tonight because of it just being six o'clock on a weekday. After I show this to everybody, I'll I'll open up for any questions somebody might have. All right, so I'm going to go down to ET, EDU 556, and here's the Digital Citizenship Presentation SD3. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to upload my presentation, and then you're going to submit it to me for assessment. Okay, so that's the that's the protocol kind of getting you to finish out Module 3. Um, at this point, are there any questions? about module three, about the presentation, about the peer review process. Dolores, go ahead. Hi, yes, good evening, everyone. I was um, looking with you said assignment two, when I first opened the assignment, um, looking at it previously on the sixth, I saw assignment two, but when I uploaded it, I just saw that it had uh, activity. It didn't have that, uh, tag for assignment two to put up there. So I uploaded it in the activity peer, um, what do you call it? Uh, the peer, a digital citizen peer review, uh -huh. but I didn't see it for assignment number two when I was looking for the tag to upload it in there. So I'm just wondering, did you see like this, what you have on the screen? I did not see that. I just okay. saw activity two. Oh, okay. So you, um, just, you accidentally just put it into activity two by mistake? No, I put it right, excuse me, activity three. You see what uh -huh. it says, citizenship, citizenship presentation. But I, when I first saw it in the beginning of the week, I did see assignment two, but when I already got ready to upload, only saw activity three for review. Uh, so okay. I don't, I don't see the assignment two part. So my presentation is in the review area. So how do I get it there? Where's the tab? It's right here. So it's right underneath there. So okay. you got activity three, digital citizenship presentation, peer mm -hmm. review. So I had to put the peer review first because that's what people have to do first. If okay. you go right here, down here, it says assignment number two, okay. digital citizenship presentation. You can then open this up by clicking on it and you can drag it right into here. It's okay. I did not see that. And the okay. reason I say, when I went to contents, you went to contents, right? And you see everything from, um, three module three but i didn't see that in order to upload it all i saw uh, you know why because it's invisible darn it there oh, you okay go. Okay. okay thank you no I that was my bad i will make sure that that's done for the other class too so what okay. happened is i opened all this for everybody to see but the the assignments i can actually make invisible or visible with okay. just sliding it over and it should have been okay. visible to you um, I feel okay because really right now your presentation is supposed to go up into peer review anyway. Okay. So it's, not a, it's not a problem. It's just okay. when you submit like the final vision, um, I think this is why I programmed it not to open up uh, automatically is because what will happen is, is people will say, okay, well, the rough draft's done. I'm just going to put this presentation up right now when in truth you haven't gone through the peer review process. Okay. So it's opened up now because now people can actually submit it. Um, and just remember that when you do this, you're going to turn it in not only to here into Brightspace, but also up in 
uh, anthology portfolio, also into the portfolio. So you're gonna so you want the draft in assignment too. So I'll upload that again today because the other wait, one wait, I did. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, that's what I misunderstand. Let yes. Me... So the draft goes in. Okay. The draft goes into the peer review because okay. it's a rough draft. Let's okay. say it's you know it's just like if you were in school and you were doing a composition. Uh, exactly. This is for the this is for the you know written draft that is unpolished. It's it's you want another fresh set of eyes to go through a peer review process. Okay. What you and a partner are going to do is you're going to go through your presentation on the, in the forum and you're going to make you're going to suggest improvements to your partner and they're going to do the same thing for you. Okay. They're going to make those those discussions. When you are finally done and you make the edits, so like okay, maybe they said slide four is confusing. Maybe you should fix this, or your reference slides aren't are incomplete, or some this that you can take that fix it. And mm -hmm. then eventually when you're done, then you put the final copy. This is like for final copy. You can put it into this final assignment number two, the presentation. You'll put so it, it was, into this one. So it was a good thing it was hidden last, last night or yeah, yeah. I like, put it in the wrong place. And my final question is EDU 556. I know the first assignment I had uploaded in EDU 556 that I had spoken to you about, and it wasn't in the activity name. But I also noticed too, this may be a question for the woman who set it up for us. It says fall 2021 and not 2022. Huh. So do I need to call her, um, the lady that she I'm gave I'm trying to speech? understand what, what's saying fall 2021? The assignment that I uploaded for um, our first one for the um, wire, is it in wire? I think chalk and wire, it uh -huh. says the course name, but it says fall 2021 instead of fall 2022. Uh, so you are you talking about Professor Ball? Yeah, should I call her about that? You already graded it, but I noticed that um, the assignment is in a name call, what it is for it is today, but it has a, a last year. Does oh, have to I, I don't think it's that. going to be a That's problem. Not, okay. I wouldn't okay. even worry about it. Okay. Uh, okay. It may even be, um, so what happens is I import a lot of content from other previous places. Okay. I try to update all the dates. It may just be a date issue. So, okay. All yeah, right. I wouldn't worry about it. All okay. right. So any Thank other you. questions? Oh, no problem. Uh, any other questions about module three, about the presentation, about the peer review? All right, so now I'm going to go on to a sneak peek of module four. Now I just opened this. Um, I just opened this, so everybody is now seeing this for the very first time. So ISTE standard, uh, I think it's the final one, which is analyst. Uh, I think it's ISTE standard seven. It's called analyst. Asks you to become a good. Um, asks you to become a, a good analyzer of data. Now I know as teachers, you're probably very used to dealing with data. But we have to um, we have to make these assignments authentic. And so what I've done is I've created something that's going to ask you to test your, um, you know, developing your spreadsheet, developing data. So this way it can actually help you. So I've released this, and the module four plan is open right now. And in this plan, tells you exactly what to do, tells you what to read. Uh, there are some other YouTube videos in here that are going to give you advice and suggestions. There is a practice grade book, and then there's an, an assignment called Using Data to Improve Student Achievement. I'm going to go over these with you over the next 20 minutes or so. So this way you kind of have a, a clear understanding of what to do for Module 4. Okay, So I'm not going to sit here and read these for you. It's opened up now for you to work on, but I'm going to go over each part and show you exactly what to do. Okay, so I did create a presentation that goes through all of the, please make sure you're not like, oh, another video, darn it, I don't feel like listening to this nasally guy talk. Try your best to go through the videos and watch them. They are slideshows, they're interactive, and they're meant to help build not only your knowledge of the content, but also to help you with the assessments. They do help you somewhat with the assessments. So watch the presentation. I'm not, um, you know, it's just a YouTube clip. As you can see, if you hit the play button, it will work. And it'll go through a lot of like basics on Excel, you know, doing Excel spreadsheets, how to mess with data, how to um, analyze data, how to make informed instructional decisions uh, decisions based on data. 
So it really does kind of work with you and to kind of incorporate this information. Uh, I have some readings. Uh, it's just part of good teaching, and that is using data to um, you know make good plans, using data to plan, using data to improve student achievement. So there's some links to videos. There are some links to additional readings. Please use them. Okay. So you have one activity and one assignment. It's important to know that this uh, assignment is going to kind of go all the way until uh, the Thanksgiving. I give you all a little bit of a Thanksgiving break. So this module four kind of goes all the way through uh, to like the Thanksgiving week. So it kind of, you, you have time. The very first thing that you're going to do uh, for an assignment is activity four. It's called practice grade book. What I ask you to do is you're going to work inside of a spreadsheet. Let me show you what it looks like right here. And you're going to manipulate this spreadsheet. You're going to put in some standards right here. Like these could just be academic standards. You can type them in or copy and paste them in right here. You're going to put some goals and some objectives in here. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is actually find some averages. These are student grades. So these are out of 10 points. I'm going to ask you to average them. So you're going to do some a little bit of manipulation. So I can see my student's got a 6.6 .6 out of this. My student got a 6.6 .6 average. You better work. You better work harder. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of another auto sum average. This kid did about the same. And you're going to discover that you're able to do a lot of them at once. All the students, I could even find out how my students did for all these, you know, I could find out what the average is for all these assignments. All right. And you'll discover I can do it for everything. Okay. You're like, wow, you just blew through that. Well, take a look. I also have this attached to different graphs. So you can see how my students are doing one, two, three, all the way up to 10. This is a very small clip. As you can see, this is 10 students right here, and they have five ass assessments here in goal one and five assessments in goal two. And if you keep on looking, there's also graphs on student averages. So uh, zero, rec uh, zero represents that they were absent, one represents they were uh, in class. You have uh, class homework averages. You end up finding out what this is worth. You also even have old assessment data in here too. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and you're just basically for this practice um, grade book, you're going to enter in standards. You're going to enter in some objectives. And I do have a link here to the Maryland State Curriculum. Uh, last time I tried it, I did notice that the Maryland State Curriculum's kind of disappeared. It's changed up a little bit. You're more than welcome to type in um, standards. I bet you can find it if you type in standards. Da, 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 da. Here, Maryland Early Learning Standards, birth through eight. Maryland College of Career for English. You can always type in this and find it. Here's some English language arts ones. Let's see if I'm trying to look for some grades. And enter search term. I'm going to do that. Content standards. Here you go. I'm just going to find some random standards just to work from. Da, 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 da. Here, I'm in grade one through two. What you're going to do is just find some standards. Oh, this looks like a standard right here. And I'm going to put this right into my grade book. Where did I put my grade book at? Here we are. Watch. There we go. And inside of here, I'm just going to put some. Heck, I could even put these smaller ones if I wanted to. Or I could go find some other standards. There. We'll pretend that those are the same. So you're just going to put some text in here. What happens is when I designed this a long time ago, I ended up just designing it to be a standard based uh, grade book. Um, when you're done, you actually save this and you'll submit it to um, my practice grade book. So you'll put it in here. 
This is a bright space. This is a practice. This practice is for your assessment. So the big assessment is in module four. It's the assignments called the same exact thing as the module using data to improve student achievement. Oh, I have to make that one viewable. There we go. Now you should be able to see it. Okay. So you'll see once I click on it, you'll see that there's a lot of different um, resources in here. There's a tutorial. There's a uh, task grade book right here. And there's also the assignment, the actual name, um, the complete set of directions are in here. And here it all goes. It explains to you that you're part of a school improvement team that has goals for the core. I'm sorry, goals for the school. Everybody has to score, or let's see, all students will achieve an average score of at least seven out of 10 on goals one, two, and three. Everybody will have at least a four out of five homework completion score. And then all students will have at least a 95% school attendance rating. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you to, the very first thing is uh, part of B, it's gonna have you complete the actual, a new grade book. So here is a, Gradebook is a little more complex. Sorry, I'm waiting for it to open. That's my old one. Here we go. Sorry to force it to open. So as you can see in here, I have a class of 25 students and they've done all of these scores. I'm gonna ask you to average their scores, average their goal and find how my students did in here. But there's other tabs in here as well. So I'm gonna ask you also to, and these tabs will get filled with information. I'm gonna ask you to label uh, the graph. The graphs, this one's gonna ask you to average stuff. You're like, wow, that's a lot of information. What do you try to do? Uh, overload me? No. Because if you read here, this tutorial document tells you how to do absolutely everything I'm asking you to do. Tells you how to open up grade books, uh, tells you how to manipulate all the documents, how to do all the stuff. It is your best friend when completing this assignment. It even tells you what to do with the additional data. Now that's the first part, that's part B, okay? Part A is just realizing where the goals are. Part B is about doing the work inside the grade book. Part C is data analysis and instructional decisions. You're going to answer these inside of your um, assignment. You're going to use the grade book and the data that you manipulated, and you're going to answer it. You're going to say, okay, did my students fulfill the school improvement goals? How do you know? What data did you find? Okay, well, and then it asks you to go through and you know, write down some of the things that you found out, some of the feedback. So what did you notice? What are some trends that you've seen in the grade book? And it also asks you to kind of give the students a little bit of feedback. I have a couple students here that have given you assignments. And it asks you to provide them with some feedback. And again, I even reiterate what to submit to the ePortfolio. So for this assignment, you're actually going to put two documents in. The first one you're going to put the grade book, the Excel spreadsheet that you're going to you're going to work on, and the second one you're just going to put a Word document with uh, parts B and C done. That's really module four in a nutshell. Now again, I put a lot of resources in here to help you complete this. Let me tell you what I've done. Just review real quick before I I'll let you ask questions. Number one. You have to go through all this. You have to read, listen, watch the presentations, watch the videos, read the documents, read the articles. Then I give you a practice grade book. With that practice grade book, I also give you 
a YouTube link that does a tutorial for you. It's me actually completing this assignment. Greetings, everyone. This is a screencast for completing the practice gradebook in EDU 556. Click it and you will see the homepage for the Maryland State Curriculum. And as you can find see, I put content on. in there. I do all the Scroll averaging. To age 15 to find and I will say the numbers will be a little different because I changed the numbers. But you can see that it's, at, it's telling you how to save everything and how to work students. with everything. And you can do more than one. That's going to help you with the practice gradebook. Okay. The practice gradebook is that it's just for practice. It's to help you prepare for the big assignment. So I'm going to hit the back button right here. Now, when you're done doing the practice uh, gradebook, which is due November 20th, so Tonight is the 10th. You have over a week and a half to work on it. The assignment is this using data to improve student achievement. The grade book becomes just a small, it becomes a little bit bigger. Instead of 10 students, you have 25 students. Instead of three, uh, two goals, you have three goals. It's not really all that different. Once you do all the calculations, it, it's pretty straightforward on what you're doing. You'll come in here and you're going to find three documents. The first one is the task. It explains what to do step by step. Here's what you do from point A, from part A all the way to part C. Labels everything you're supposed to do. Okay. There's also a grade book. Again, the grade book has student names. You'll notice in the practice grade book, it's just numbers. But in here, I actually put some names in here for you to use for your analysis. It makes anal uh, the analysis much easier. But you're still going to come over here and you're going to find all the auto sum and the averages. You're going to find all the averages of all the student work. You're going to work inside the graph. You're going to label this graph. You're going to find the uh, average for the student attendance. You'll find homework averages as well. You'll also use this additional data in here. It tells you how well students did on their some standardized tests. If they have uh, IEPs, if they're English language learners, you'll also see how they did on some of the test scores. If you want to see how they did on test scores, you can see. Uh, so it's a big data uh, dashboard will help you to kind of determine uh, who's struggling, who's doing well. OK, you'll complete this grade book, but you're also going to do a data analysis and instructional decision model. That is based on this document right here. So you're going to do C, which has you're going to do a data analysis because, you know, you do all this grade book, you have all this data, it's great and all, but what you have to do is you have to make informed decisions. You notice trends in your data. Well, I noticed that these three students that are in special education they didn't perform as well as I would have liked them to do. They did great in this. They didn't do great in this. You may want to also uh, look for trends. Okay, well, assignment number five, everybody did poorly on. Well, that's going to help me to make a decision down the road. Well, maybe I need to improve on that uh, um, assessment. So they need to improve on the ideas in that assessment. You're going to go through and do conducting an analysis, but you're also going to make instructional decisions based on data. Okay. So I'm going to stop at this point and open it up to any questions. Are the questions uh, related to the presentation that you just did or just general questions? Any question you have. Okay, so I did send an email. I thought you may not have got to see it, but um, I was I wanted to ask what would I do in the case of my peer not being available or not, not I've reached out and not heard anything back? Yeah, I mentioned that before. It's uh, So number one, I'm not going to penalize anybody for um, if your your uh, partner hasn't 
uploaded their document yet. I'm going to keep on sending reminders that they have to upload their uh, presentation. Um, once it's, I would just check back once or twice a day to see if it's not. If it ends up being that somebody is just dropped off the grid, I'll end up adjusting your your um, peer review partner. So um, so just uh, hang in there, Yvette, and uh, I promise you're not going to be in any trouble if they don't uh, upload. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michelle. Hi, um, just a quick question about the final presentation we have to upload. Yeah. Do we put the honor code on a separate slide or do we put it on the conclusion or the reference slide? Do we just have to add it, that? You can, you can do it either way. Okay. Yep, um, you can put it on the title slide, you can put it at the end, you can put it just, as long as it's there, uh, you can also use the notes section if you want to for the slides, either one is fine. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? All right, so module three and mo so we're finishing up module three this this week. Uh, just make sure to again, just like Yvette mentioned, please. I've been uh, making sure that people to nag them to make sure they're putting up their presentation early. Um, now it's you know now it's getting to be into this zone of peer review. So please make sure you put it up as much as uh, you know as get it up, um, up as much as uh, get it up as soon as you possibly can if you have not done so already. Go to the peer review forum and you can go ahead now. And if you're up there, please go ahead and conduct your peer review. And then after you're done, you can go ahead and use the feedback or don't use the feedback. It's really up to you. And then eventually that presentation has to go into Brightspace and into Anthology Portfolio. Okay, so you actually are putting it into two places. The reason I do two places is... Uh, Brightspace is uh, a great grade book to actually put the content up and it works a little bit better with slideshows, but I still have to get the data into port the um, anthology portfolio. Uh, it's just a matter of 30 seconds putting it into two places. Um, and it's typically, I only ask you to put this assignment up in two different places, just in case something happens. So, um, so that's, that's, just uh, just wrapping up module three. Module four, you ended up getting a sneak peek. I opened up a little bit early. So this way, if you'd like to get a start on it, you may. Um, you can go ahead and start to work on the using data to improve student achievement. All the readings are open. All the presentations are open. The practice grade book is now up and ready. Uh, all the, the tutorial video is up. And also the main assignment is up as well. So if you feel like if you don't want to wait around, you're more than welcome to get a head start. If you want to enjoy a little bit of Thanksgiving, uh, have a little bit of a Thanksgiving break, you can. So I have about 640. Are there time for any other questions? Okay. If there are no questions, you are more than welcome to go. I will put this recording up. Uh, in a little bit, it will be up just like I did last time. It'll be up on, um, it'll be up at Brightspace probably by tomorrow. So I'm going to stop.